I'm Simone Wicha, the director of the Blanton Museum of Art at the University of Texas in Austin. And hi, I'm Janet Allen, chair of the Blanton National Leadership Board. Welcome to the latest in our curated conversation series. Tonight's topic is Artful Leadership, a Blanton Board q and I'm joined today by three of my fellow board members who agreed to join this panel with Simone. So be, before we get started, just a few notes. Your audio is muted, um, so no one can hear you. Um, and only the panelists are visible on the screen. Um, we will be taking questions and you can use the Q&A window. It's at the bottom of your screen. Down at the bottom, there's um, the word Q&A. And you can pop in there, open that up, put your questions in and we send them over and we'll, we'll get to them. Um, but let's get started. Um, the museum at our museum or any civic institution is really only as strong as the community that is there um, partnering with you, helping to build you. And you've had the opportunity on these talks to hear from some of our staff members, from our gallery assistants to our educators and our curators. And there's another extraordinary group of people who is really committed and care deeply about the Blanton. Um, and um, they are our National Leadership Board. And I'd like to welcome, besides Janet, three of them who are here with us today, Suzanne McFadden, Gilberto Cardenas, and Tom Dunning. Um, the great things happen with great partnerships. And a lot of the great things that have happened at the Blanton have been really done in partnership with our board. Um, as a director of this museum, I get a lot of questions asked of me, sometimes day-to-day -day questions, sometimes long-term strategy planning that I'm doing. And the board members are the people who I get to go to for counsel. Um, they're ambassadors for this museum. They cheer us on. Sometimes they ground us in ways that we need to be grounded. Um, they watch over us. They're watching us. They invest in us because they believe in us. And for me, as a director, one of the key things is that they help me think through things. Um, every time I talk to the board, board members uh, in meetings or individually, I learn something new. It helps me open my um, perspective and my thinking. And um, I, I value them tremendously. And I'm grateful for the team who's here with us to answer a few questions. Um, our board comes from across the country about 40% of them are alumni, the rest are not. About 60% live in Austin and the rest live across the state and across this country. Um, they have varying perspectives, varying experiences and um, varying interests. Um, but we have one thing in common, which is we really wanna build this museum and continue to see it succeed. Um, on that note, I wanna introduce um, Suzanne McFadden properly. She's a writer, a parent, an art lover, and was born and raised in Kingston, Jamaica, um, and lived there until beginning Cornell University in 1983. After graduating with her BA from Cornell, she worked in retail industry in New York City. And subsequent to that, she re uh, received her MFA from Mills College in Oakland, California. In uh, she joined the Blanton National Leadership Board in 2015, and she also serves on the board of the Studio Museum in Harlem, which is an institution we both admire. Dr. Gilberto Cardenas recently um, retired as executive director of the Center for Arts and Culture at the University of Notre Dame, where he also serves as professor um, emeritus of sociology. Um, Dr. Cardenas taught at UT here in Austin from 1975 to 1999, and while living here, he opened uh, a gallery, Galeria Sin Fronteras, which featured artists, Chicano, Chicana, Latino, Latino artists. Um, Dr. Cardenas has um, been a, an advisory council member for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Gates Mill Millennium Scholars, and a founding board member of the Smithsonian Latino Center Board. He also serves currently on El Museo del Barrio Board, another institution that we, we, I admire. Um, Gilberto joined the Blanton National Leadership Board in 2020, earlier this year with his wife, Dolores. One of the great things about um, the Blanton National Leadership Board is we invite couples to join, and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. We're thrilled that Dolores did. 
And I want to give a shout out to another um, board member who's not here on this panel, but um, that's Sally Dunning, who is a passionate art collector and is one of the board members who never misses a meeting and I know is always watching and always deeply involved. She's been involved on statewide and national organizations dedicated to the arts and humanities and women's issues. And I know the reason that our panelist Tom Dunning, Tom Dunning is on this panel and on this board. Um, he, like Sally, has had a distinguished um, service to his community and particularly really interested in your corporate leadership and your corporate boards. But really, um, I find in this moment, especially Tom, the many civic um, organizations, Texas governors have appointed Tom to major state um, boards and commissions. And many Dallas mayors have called on Tom to address and resolve challenging issues facing Dallas ranging from homelessness to race to equal opportunity. And I know Tom's commitment is to advancing the quality of life for all. Um, I would like to start by asking each of you to share a little bit about your own story, how you got involved at the Blanton, um, how you came, became interested in the arts and um, a, a lover of collecting art or, or experience in visiting arts institutions and the Blanton specifically. Suzanne, do you want to start us off? Sure. Um, hi, everyone. So pleased to be here and talk with you uh, about the Blanton, which is obviously near and dear to my heart. Um, so I didn't really grow up with art. I think the first experience I had with art was through the Encyclopedia Britannica uh, that my father had bought from a traveling salesman, and it had pictures by Matisse and Picasso. And that sort of shaped what I thought art was, you know, old masters and just things that were never going to be accessible to me. And then in 2010, I was living in Switzerland and I went to Art Basel, which is maybe the mother of all art fairs in Basel, Switzerland. And it really reshaped my worldview of what art could be because for a sudden, all of a sudden I was seeing art that reflected my experiences, works from... Haitian artists, for example, uh, Basquiat, or even works by the photographer Hiro, uh, uh, Sugimoto, who did his series on um, seas starting on Jamaica, which I had no idea. He actually did it when I was there. So um, when I got to Austin, I had in my mind that I would collect now that I could saw that what art could be and how it could mean something to me. When I got to Austin in 2009, I was very focused on raising my family, but I still wanted something that engaged me in the art world. And through Janet Allen, our board chair, uh, who's here with us this evening as well, she invited me to join the Blanton Art Club, which I would describe as a booster organization for the Blanton. And the more that I got involved and saw what the Blanton was attempting to do and is attempting to do was the more I became interested in the museum. And I believe that it's good to do things that are local even if they have a global impact, for example, with our uh, Ellsworth Kelly Austin, that's a local piece that is has global reverberations. And so that's how I came to the Blanton board. Thanks, Suzanne. Gilberto? Hi, glad to be here. Uh, my interest in collecting art uh, began in the mid-1960s in, in Los Angeles, where I grew up. And it was a really uh, crazy period during that time. It was a long-haired, crazy hippie and got involved with the Chicano movement and also got active in other, with other groups as well, African-American struggles in LA, the anti-war movement and all those things that happened, the great boycott for the Farm Workers Union. And at that time, I really took an interest in using the camera to document the living and working conditions of Latinos communities, uh, to look, document the struggles that we were involved in at the time um, this led me also then to meeting artists and to begin to seriously collect Latino art. And uh, at that time, uh, I really got involved with a lot of arts organizations. And it, um, it really motivated me to, to really go further into Latino art and to help advance it working with the artist. I often define my origins as a bottom-up collection uh, that has grown in importance and value, I should say as Latino art in the United States has also gained greater recognition and importance in the past several decades. I joined the faculty at UT in 1975 uh, in the Department of Sociology. 
although my primary area of specialization was international migration, which I've done a lot of work in since that time, my interest in photography uh, continued to increase as well as my interest in art. And eventually led me to develop a course called Visual Sociology, Exploring Society Photographically. My course did not enable me to have my students visit collections on campus, including the Blanton Museum, and to see exhibition and to use works to, to, from my collection that were on loan uh, to the Blanton, uh, as well as to look at other collections as well. I'm very pleased that the museum, the Blanton Museum in 1999, loaned works from my collection to El Museo del Barrio in New York for the museo's exhibition in New York, uh, pressing the point, parallel expressions Puerto Rican uh, and graphic arts and Chicano Puerto Rican uh, arts movement. Uh, again, 1999, a full page article just recently appeared by the way, last week in the New York Times that featured the current exhibition at the Museo of work created by artists in the New York uh, print studio, El Tayet Boricua, an organization that I have been working with for many, many, many years. One of the best organized and also probably the most beautiful uh, exhibits from my collection ever presented was installed at the Blanton recently uh, at the, uh, I guess, October 2019 to January 2020. Artes Sin Fronteras prints from the self help graphic studio. My wife Dolores and I are particularly grateful to the curator Valencia Basano and to her assistant, uh, Christian Wurst, for putting together this really fine exhibition. Thank you, Gilberto. So Tom, can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved at the Blanton? Well, I think you already stated it. It's uh, because Sally, yep. uh, who is a very talented uh, interior designer and has a passion for art and was a docent at the DMA, the Dallas Museum of Art for 10 years, is really how I got involved. And so how did she get involved? Well, our good friends, Mickey and Jeannie Klein, asked Sally to meet with them at the Blanton and uh, take a tour. And she loved the size and the scope of what she saw and was so excited to be asked to serve on the board. And she was on the board for maybe three or four years and the board was restructured so that couples could be on the board. And so I'm basically, I'm a tag along, but I will say this, as a UT alum, it really is a special honor to serve on the Blanton National Leadership Board. And for those of you who are watching this, I just wanna make sure you know there are three persons on this panel and I'm the one who knows the least about art, but it's an honor to be with each of you. Thank you, Tom. Um, so Suzanne, I get this question often, which you probably do too. What does a board member do? Um, so there's all sorts of boards and every organization needs um, perhaps a different role from you. But in some ways, could you help kind of just break down what do you do? Um, you know, what are some of the roles that you've personally taken on as a board member here or elsewhere? You're asking me or all three I'm of us? I'm asking Suzanne first and then I'll ask you Tom. Okay, okay, good, okay, good. <laughs> Um, so I, th I think I've thought about a lot. What, what does it mean to be a board member? And I think that being a board member means having the ability to pivot in the direction that the institution that you're affiliated with needs. Um, I, I think that a museum, it's a living entity, you know, it's always moving. It's not a static thing. And so what may have been required when I first joined the board is maybe not what's required today. So some of the things that I've done with the Blanton is I've participated in committees that are dealing with capital projects, you know, maybe reimagining the building or uh, access. So I've participated in that because I love art and architecture. And that's another thing as a board member is I think it's very important to find when you find the institution that means something to you, then find the things within that institution where you feel you can contribute and you can you can uh, help your institution keep moving forward. Uh, so I've done that. I've hosted dinner for artists who had shows at the museum. Um, I've participated in helping to fund 
uh, acquisition projects of artists that the museum felt was important and that I felt was important. I've helped fund shows as well. And I think one of the things that I'm proudest of is again, going back to this idea of what is a museum is that I think that a museum today anyway, needs to also be a community space. And so conversations that have happened before even 2020 and Black Lives Matter um, that were important conversations about race uh, have happened at the Blanton and I helped to support that. And so that was something that was incredibly meaningful to me. So I just feel that um, the more that I get to know about the museum, obviously is the more that I can participate in a way that will be meaningful to me and as a board member, because I want to make sure that as a board member, I am contributing in a way that it's not just about me, but it's about the museum and the bigger picture for the museum. So I would say that, again, flexibility is the okay. number one thing that I think of as a board member. Right, because we're, we're working to build something, right? So it's constantly yeah. changing. I mean, the institution's changing and the community around you is changing, the world around you is changing. And so exactly. we, keep, we keep adding um, to it and responding yeah. to that moment. Tom? Um, can I ask you the same question? So, so can you help me? Um, I think for, for, for you also, you know, how do you see, what are things that you have done as a board member and what is the role of a board member? Well, first of all, I think, I think anybody serving on the board must be a good listener. And you must really, if, if you want to be on a board or you're being asked to be on the board, you must really feel strongly about the, assuming it's a nonprofit or a civic board or even a corporate board, you must feel strongly about that company or that uh, civic group or that nonprofit. And, and I will say this and why that I have enjoyed being on the Blanton board is because I believe that great universities must have great museums and cutting edge art museums as the Blanton does. And certainly the Blanton is a great asset to uh, UT. And uh, this is why Sally and I supported through the eyes of Texas and Ellsworth Kelly's Austin, which truly gave uh, the Blanton worldwide recognition. And this would not have happened without you, Simone, without your curators and without a strong board working with you and backing you. I completely agree, especially and that last part. And uh, having served on a lot of different boards, and I mean, I've been in some board meetings where people almost got in a fight, uh, go back when I was chairing Dallas Together, which was uh, Dallas faced its worst racial crisis in 1988. And uh, the, the mayor asked me to chair it. And, uh, but you know, it worked. We spent two years on it and we broke into committees, but the key was, is to listen and to respect others and to let uh, and to it's okay to challenge, but but do it in a non-confrontational way. And so, what I would say is, is that board members, anybody who wants to be on a board, they must be willing to give their time, their suggestions, their their financial support if possible, and and always be prepared for meetings. There's nothing worse than going to a meeting and somebody's asking questions when it was all in the board material. And uh, you also must be willing to ask questions, good questions, and even dumb questions, because sometimes dumb questions can stimulate conversations that makes you further understand what you're trying to accomplish or maybe where or where you shouldn't be going. Um, and so yeah, it's also very important to have boards that are, are diverse, boards both in uh, where they live and their, and their experiences and certainly their gender and certainly their color. And finally, I would say, if I may say also about the Blanton, which I really am proud of is that they're sensitive to major issues of the day and is a leader in these conversations, which is something that's both in, that both UT and the Blanton, uh, which sets them apart from other uh, museums and other uh, universities. And last year's Words Matter exhibition looked at how Latin American artists use visual art and written language to express their, their views, their, uh, their, their views of politics. 
Uh, also last year, there was Vincent Valdez's paintings that addressed the complicated issues about race in our country. I mean, I think this is so important that we are staying again on the cutting edge. And I think this is why people who are serving on this board really are proud to be here. Well, thank you, Tom. I think your point of listening is really important for all of us and, and really thinking, I mean, it's hard to um, add add um, value or feedback or thoughts or investment when you're not really paying attention and hearing what's going on. Um, and I, I've always loved your statement about asking the dumb questions because all of us are in that position at one point and really feeling comfortable kind of bringing a different perspective or not assuming everybody knows the same information is really important and, and that kind of- Well, a, a, a cute story, this was on a corporate board and a friend of mine happened to be chairing it. And I asked a question. He said, well, didn't you read the board material? I said, yes, I read this part twice and I don't understand it. <laughs> and probably half of the people, maybe all the people on the board felt the same way. So anyway, well, so laugh, you know, laugh and smile. Yeah, well, so tell me a little bit from your perspective, what, um, you have done on boards, on different boards, you've been on, on many, and, and what you see your role or kind of some of the work that you see yourself doing for the Blanton's board. Yes, you know, I have a very mixed background, being an academic, uh, art collector, gallery owner. I also invested in properties in downtown Austin, and so I have real estate interests as well. So it's, it's a blend of, of a background, that background that brought me to various boards around the country and to work with a wide range of nonprofit organizations, uh, regional arts alliances, uh, national institutions such as the Smithsonian Institution. I was happy to learn last week, for example, that the National Museum of Mexican Art in Chicago, which I was on the board at one time for a number of years, received a $3.5 million grant, a multi-year grant from Ford Foundation. Um, my wife and I have donated over 2,200 works to the museum and it's part of the permanent collection and they have a permanent space in our name at that museum. So again, that's just part of the experience that, that we're talking about here. Uh, many of the boards that I served on focus uh, primarily on advancing Latino art and developing new programs. Right. I am also pleased that many of the larger organizations and museums are now finally recognizing this work to be central to their mission. I feel that my teaching experience at UT and the University of Notre Dame enables me to, uh, as an additional resource at least, to have some expertise in the area of minority arts. Uh, my leadership role in various capacities enabled me to work with foundation program officers uh, with very uh, influential and wealthy benefactors, including the Gates Foundation. That was a great experience for me. I participated in the formation of a program that provided some 20,000 uh, fellowships to minority students. They had to earn this. They had to be eligible on their own merits to, to be eligible to be admitted to Harvard or UT or UT Brownsville. And as a board member of this, this program, uh, I was very happy to see that Bill and Melinda Gates uh, made a billion dollar donation initially and then another half a billion dollars, which at that time was the single largest private donation in the entire world and maybe the entire history. Uh, again, just to have that interaction with folks like that and, and other board members uh, really made a difference in my uh, interest in, in serving on boards and my ability to serve on boards. I had an opportunity to participate in two large scale uh, capital campaigns. First, when I was assistant provost at Notre Dame, uh, we did a, a capital campaign, as well as at being a board member of the Smithsonian Institution's first national capital campaign committee. I'm confident that this experience with my uh, and with my wife's involvement with the arts also puts us in a good condition or position to work together with each of the board members to help the Blanton achieve its mission. We look forward to learning more uh, through the advice and counsel of more experienced board, Blanton board members, so my two board members here, for example, uh, and how we can best help in this endeavor. The, the Lotus and I are looking forward to working with Simon and with other board members in attracting Latinos as potential uh, board members who would also be in a position to contribute time and effort as well as financial support and resources to the Blanton. My goal is to work with Simon to replace myself uh, with one or more Latinos in the museum board in the not too distant future. I've been on a lot of boards, I'm tired, but I'm really great, happy to be on, on this board. 
So as one would say, that's a special project that Simone and I have, uh, it will be working on to accomplish. So I loved um, when we first started talking about you joining the board and, and that was the um, project number one, right? Um, okay. uh, join the first day you join is to find this, the way to retire, to get off the board and, and replace yourself. And I really appreciate that. And, and that is a, a part of um, board leadership, right? Is continuing to think who else will you know, kind of um, help build uh, next phase and how do we keep moving forward and how do we keep growing and and, um, and adding um, and also di diversifying, right? Just, just really thinking through that and thinking um, proactively about who we're looking for and nationally and in our yeah. own community. I just hope it doesn't happen before we have our first board meeting that I can attend. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Hopefully we get out of COVID, but you're not going anywhere until we get out of COVID. We'll be, we'll be together. Um, we've had a lot of Zoom meetings, just like everyone else. So, um, but it's been actually a fun experience as well. Suzanne, you um, talked about something in your in your answer just a second ago about um, two things. One is um, in supporting home up in your local community. You live here in Austin. Mm -hmm. The Blanton plays the role of being Austin's art museum and really supporting our community in that role. But you also um, talked about. Um, you know, aligning your values. And you've, you and I have talked about that a lot. Um, you, you talked about how the museum has been um, committed to um, social justice and, and diversity in our collection. And that is something that was important to you. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, and also you, like all of our other board members get asked to serve on many boards. How do you go through the decision-making process of where to get involved? What does it mean for you to align your values to an institution? Well, I think like everybody else on this call, we have many things that are demanding our time. And I know for me, it's important to be involved in places where I feel that I can give the effort that's necessary. I am not interested in sort of just the name experience, but actually learning from and contributing to the organizations that I work with uh, in any sort of board capacity or leadership capacity. Um, so for me, the Blanton aligns with my values. And I just want to be very clear that aligning of values doesn't mean that there's no pushback or there's no conversation or there's no discussion. Actually, that is how you understand if things are aligning for you. It's, it's um, like Tom said, it's asking, feeling comfortable enough to ask the dumb questions and thinking about where you should go as well as you shouldn't go. And I've had that experience uh, with the Blanton and continue to, to do so. Um, so I think that, you know, right now we're in a very sort of uh, historic moment socially with a lot of social unrest, but the Blanton has been having some of these conversations prior to this moment. So to me, it's also leading the way. And, and I, I want to be involved with organizations that I think are doing that. So for example, the Blanton owns a beautiful painting by an artist by the name of Mary Kors. And now so many institutions are talking about, we need to diversify our collections. We need to deaccession, which is a fancy word for sell paintings that will fetch or, or works of art that will fetch large sums of money so that we can now bring into the uh, collection works of art that speak to the broader community. Well, at the Blanton, we've been doing that for a while. Um, so the, one of my favorite works of art is a work by El Anitsui. I think we have a picture of yes, that. Yes, we have a picture. And um, El Anitsui is Ghanaian, he's from Ghana originally. And this is one of his few works which are actually double-sided. But, and I don't think anyone can see the, the detail, but he's concerned with the impact that imperialism and colonialism has had on developing countries and underserved communities. And so these, a lot of his works are made from discarded bottle tops from things that were introduced such as beer and uh, milk and that kind of stuff. So to, having this kind of a work in an institution to which I belong, to me is a physical manifestation of the fact that we're thinking about things that are important, that are part of the larger uh, whole. 
The other thing that I would say for the Blanton as to why I love being involved with it is because um, of your education department. So that's led by Ray Williams. And uh, I remember one of the first board meetings that I attended, it was a conversation about for medical students at the UT uh, Dell Medical School and how to have empathy for your patients. Maybe as a scientist, as an emerging doctor, you don't believe in God or you don't believe in something and your patient is an older woman who's a devout Roman Catholic and wants you to pray with her. And so this understanding of empathy using artwork that is a part of the Blanton's permanent collection, Ray did that or working with Alzheimer patients and their caregivers. So to, to not only be involved with a museum that I think is, is leading the way on many cultural conversations, but has been in this space for quite some time, but also the community outreach that's there, that is very important to me. And that's when I talk about aligning of values. So my collection doesn't focus on, you know, Renaissance art, right? I'm more interested in contemporary artists um, that reflect my experience as a citizen of the world. I've lived in many different places, so I'm an, and I'm an immigrant. So my collection focuses on that but there's an alignment of values in the fact that representation matters and how that medical student goes on and talks to that older woman whose faith is very important to her. So for me, the Blanton really captures what I feel about in my personal values and also, and that is facing outwards towards the community using art. Right, I mean, you so well said, Suzanne. I mean, how um, art, we can learn so much about ourselves and the world around us through artists and artists' um, eyes and, and their works and also how, you know, um, important um, an art museum and culture is to society and every aspect of it, right? From becoming a, a empathetic doctor to um, more knowledgeable about our community. So thank you for saying that. Absolutely. And just one more thing I would say about community that I like about the Blanton is that I think some of the education classes that I've attended through board meetings, I call them classes or with information, we're, we're looking at things that are impacting all communities, right? So is there a community that doesn't have Alzheimer's? Is there, is there a community that's not, doesn't have members who are struggling with PTSD? So again, I like that idea of being involved with something local that's thinking of far broader perspective. So you, you mentioned something and I'll just mention for, for everyone um, watching this on, at our board meetings, we spend a lot of time doing um, behind the scenes kind of learning and it's hopefully educational for our board members, but it has a real value because like Tom said, you know, listening and like Suzanne saying, like understanding what the programs are and, and just really understanding the depth of the program and what we're doing. And it takes time to really get there behind the scenes. The staff is at the museum involved in it every day, but ensuring our board members are seeing that and hearing that and um, watching and, and kind of coming in our galleries, but also in our board meetings. We spend a lot of time kind of analyzing the program. Um, Gilberto, you have uh, probably the longest track record of watching this museum. Um, you know, teaching at UT in the 70s, having a gallery in the 80s. Um, you've watched this museum over the years uh, evolve, change. What is your perspective of where the Blanton is today and kind of what, it, what the future holds for it? Well, I'm pleased to say that, you know, my involvement with the Blanton was uh, very good from the very beginning. I had an opportunity to work with various curators, uh, Mari Carmen Ramirez and Annette Carlazzi and others. Over the years, uh, when I had the gallery, we did some projects together. Um, I am very, very happy to say also, Simon, with your leadership uh, and outstanding staff that, have, that you have together working, uh, it really has built even more solid foundation for the museum. And it enables the Blanton uh, to expand its reach in Austin, to expand its reach throughout the nation and beyond borders. And I truly mean that. I mean, I think Blanton is really a, a national and international and Texas museum. I am very pleased also about the wonderful mix of exhibitions and related program at the Blanton Museum that includes a broader range. And I mean this all truth, a broader range of artistic strength by artists from minority communities and artists who address pressing issues facing our country and society. Uh, I've seen the diversity of the museum staff uh, change. Uh, we've seen the visitor 
uh, when I've been there, it's very mixed, much more than ever than I had ever seen before. UT's faculty and student body has also changed, yeah. which I think is very good too. Uh, I'm pleased that the Blanton has been successful in reaching out to minorities uh, and to a broad uh, and diverse group of various publics around the, uh, that who have been attending ex exhibitions. A good example in my case uh, for this reach is the range of marketing and outreach efforts related to the programming initiatives uh, by the museum curatorial staff for the Art Sin Fronteras exhibit. Uh, I was thrilled to see a large number of visitors at the museum and, and to hear positive feedback uh, from uh, from these visitors that I got to meet. A variety of well-developed and web-based announcements came out for the show, together with an airport video, which I was very happy to see when I used to go to the airport, uh, promoting the exhibit, magazine publications, program materials. Uh, it really exceeded anything that I had uh, experienced before when I donated work or put work on loan uh, from our collection. Well, thank you for saying that. You know, we're really trying to get out in our community and making sure Austin um, knows we're, we're here, obviously for the students and the faculty on campus as well, but really making sure that, you know, people see and hear us and understand what we're doing and um, it feels relevant and, and, and um, uh, also making sure that our diverse Austin feels welcome and that there is um, kind of diversity of collection and presentation and that we're showing, you know, you know, our, our world as best we can. Our collections are, are focused in certain areas, but, you know, the commitment to bring an exhibition, Suzanne, I know you love the Witness exhibition or our Making Africa recently, some really important exhibitions that we've brought to, to Austin to make sure we're addressing um, topics that go beyond our collection as well. Um, so thank you for saying that. Tom, um, how does a board member become a board member? So, so you've been involved in, in corporate leadership, corporate boards and lots of not-for-profit boards, but you've also, one area that I'd love to kind of ask you a little bit you know, more specifically about is you've been involved in a lot of civic um, positions, right? In, in, in Dallas and on statewide um, appointments and you know, there's a real desire for us to get involved um, civically and for people to get involved in their communities. And there's a real need for people to get involved in their communities, whether it's on a, a museum board or, um, you know, on a park, park foundation for your city or um, other meaningful um, needs. So tell, tell us, can you tell us a little bit about that path for you and that experience um, and what the differences have been and how you get involved? Sure. Uh, it actually goes back to, I think it was the end of my sophomore year at UT and uh, the late Shirley Bird Perry, who everybody loved for the 35 or 40 years that she was uh, associate dean of student life at UT, emphasized over and over to everybody that she met that UT is our university and get involved, get involved on campus. And when you graduate, and when you move to a city, whether it's large or small, get involved because it's your city and make sure that you and if you feel strongly on something, show leadership, because if not, it may not be the city that that you want to live in. And she felt the same way about uh, campus. So so I did become involved on campus and involved in Dallas and involved in the state of Texas, as, as you have so noted. So. People ask me, how do you get on boards? I mean, I'm asked this a lot. And what I've said is one is, as I, well, one is you have to have a desire to be on that board. You just, yeah, because if you're on a board uh, that you don't care about, then you're not, not going to be good at it. And so anyway, uh, so what I would say is start off as a volunteer, uh, whether it's a nonprofit or whether it's being a docent at the Blanton. And if you really show a lot of interest and, and uh, it's, it's fine to, to begin asking, say, if there's an opening on this board, uh, I would like to serve, I'd like to be more involved. And most of the time, uh, nonprofits, uh, civic boards, they're always looking for people who want to put their time and effort into it. So, um, it's, 
And once you serve on a board, and if you serve with distinction on that board, others will come after you. And, uh, uh, and I, I would say never give up. And I know the first city board I tried to get on, I had a friend who was on the city council. And I said, gosh, I'd like to be on the Parks and Recreation Board, which was the premier board in Dallas, although I, I didn't know it at the time. It wasn't just Parks and Rec. It included all the museums, uh, all the arts. Uh, since then, they have split it up. But so I asked and he said, oh, my gosh, that's just for important people. And he named important people. But he said, if there's any other board you'd like to get on. So, so I looked down the list. And there was a board called the Crossroads Center, which ultimately became the Martin Luther King Center. And I made friends with many, many African-Americans who are still close friends today. And these same people became very active in our community. Uh, some serving on, on the council, some were the first time. Uh, well, anyway, they came active. And so years later, but by the way, six years after that, I did get on the park board because I had a friend of mine who, a, a second friend of mine, who I'd helped in his campaign. And uh, uh, he, so I said, I'd like to serve on the park board. And he said, fine. And I was put on it and I served as, uh, as vice president. But by serving in these boards, I became more attractive, I guess, uh, for others, whether they were nonprofits or they were civic boards. And so I would say to people who do want to get involved, uh, get involved in a campaign, try to help somebody get elected, whether it's to the city council or to the school board. Or in 1982, uh, when Mark White was not given a chance to win to be governor of Texas, I ran his campaign in Dallas. And, and we became really good friends and he appointed me to be on a number of different boards. And from that, it leads to even other boards going on the chamber board and, and ultimately going on corporate boards. So it's, uh, once you're on there doing, doing uh, or being devoted to doing it right and helping others and once again, listening. So, I mean, that's, that's, my, that's my story. And, uh, you know, it it's, has been a great, a great run and I'm still on boards and I've loved being on the Blanton board because every time I'm there, I learn something new. Well, thank you, Tom. And I mean, like what you're saying is one door leads to the other, right? Just, just go get involved. Um, That's a very simple, a very simple way to put it in a very, in much fewer words than what I use. So. No, no, you use just the right words, but just, you know, I heard you say you need to care about it and, and one door leads to that. And it's partially, you become more attractive because you've had more, you've had experience, but also it connects you with more people and, 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 ideas that you didn't even think you were probably going to get involved with at the beginning. Right. Um, so one. Right. But, but well, it. but also, you know, being on a board, I think you have to be willing to express yourself outside that board and like with the Blanton and I've spoken to the two previous presidents, I said, you need to make sure that every incoming student goes over and spends at least several hours in the, the Blanton. Right. And uh, as an incoming freshman, uh, gosh, well, as an incoming freshman, they said, look to your left and look to your right, because in a year and a half, two of the three of you are not going to be there. But it is different today. And I just think it would have been wonderful if they would have said, OK, uh, freshman, you're going to spend an hour or two hours at the Museum of Art. You're going to spend whatever it was called then. And you're going to go into the History Museum. But I, but you know, because I was not encouraged to, I never did. But I think today it would really help a lot of students and many students might end up being come very involved with the Bland in, in the years, giving money and uh, their, their time. So I have, um, I, there's a few questions here that I wanna get to. Um, one's for you, Suzanne, which I wanna get to in a second, but um, there's there's one that this this point segues into and, and I'd welcome anybody to answer it. It's, it's about, um, youth and students and kind of starting off. And um, the question is, I've noticed that more and more boards, governments engage youth, young adults and kind of the youth leadership of boards. Um, obviously the Blanton plays a role on this campus and is involved in, um, with uh, student life. There's graduate interns, there's internship programs at the museum. But talk to me a little bit about your perspective, Suzanne or, or Tom or Gilberto um, about 
youth uh, leadership and, and young people getting involved on boards in the kind of early phase stages and the importance of that voice. Well, I think it's very important um, because you know, that's what moves us forward, right? Are new ideas and new ways of thinking. And so uh, I, again, I think to increase and, and maintain the dynamic structure of this organization that we belong to, we need those voices here as well. Um, even the difference between myself and my children's ages, the things that they have so easily adapted to, for example, knowing the meaning of cisgender, uh, being easily able to adapt to using different pronouns are things that are new to me. So having this perspective, I think is very important and should be encouraged uh, wholeheartedly. All right, thank you. Tom, yeah, you if I could add just a, a word to that, um, maybe there might be some way to create some kind of advisory group among students. I don't know if you have that already or not, Simone, or you ever tried it before. Uh, I, I see a big gap, a gender gap in a lot of boards I've been on. Uh, it's, it's just across the board, you know, just, uh, it's really hard sometimes. So making an outreach effort uh, and maybe a formal way to get them involved, maybe one of many ways. Uh, yeah. But I know at, the, at Notre Dame, we had an Institute for Latino Studies, which I directed, and, we, and our advisory uh, council, which is, you know, second to the top, of, right next to the board of trustees, uh, we actually had two students on our, uh, one the former graduate and then a, a recent graduate and the one that was still a student uh, to serve as a short period of time to give that experience. So. Yeah, thank you, Gilbert. That's a great um, point. We used to have a, a student advisory council many years ago when we first opened, but it was, um, it it changed, it shifted over to having more interns and kind of an in program internally, but I, I really love the idea of exploring it again. Um, Simone, you know, Simone, it, it seems to me that, that uh, it's, you know, I guess when I've talked with different deans and I said, can you bring your students over to the Blanton? They go, gosh, we're so busy and so forth, so forth. Would it be possible though, for you to touch base with say the dean uh, dean of business school, a dean of social work, and say, hey, can we have a day of your time and we'll bring over our curators, we'll bring over a slideshow or whatever, just to try to pique the interest of those people and also talk about what you have done uh, in bringing over students who are in uh, nursing school, medical school, and having them to, to better understand how to actually uh, talk to others and yeah. uh, better better communicate. But by going into these, if they would allow it, going into the spending a day over there, then some of those students will eventually come over to the Blanton. And well, I think it's better for, it, for the students and certainly better for long term for the Blanton. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And there is, um, I mean, there, I will say that the, the Blanton serves every college and every unit on every department on campus right now, but it is so much about that kind of um, grassroots knocking on doors, it's constituent building. And it's even that case on the campus. I mean, it's like all things, right? It's about conversations and um, having those conversations one-on-one. -on -one. We certainly have them with many deans and there's um, many more. And I, I agree with you, Tom, it's something that's- Well, really also though, I mean, all of us who are on, on the board, if we have any opportunity to talk to deans or to uh, professors and, you know, just saying, hey, you know, it would be great if we could bring over our curators so they could talk about the Blanton. Yeah, and maybe exactly. sometimes they, they would listen to, to, to well, a board that's member. The, that's the role of, uh, you know, being an ambassador as well, right? Either right. On, on campus or in our community. Uh, let's see, there is a question here. What tools or strategies do you think are essential for building and maintaining a healthy museum board? Um, thoughts on that, Suzanne? What tools and strategies do you think are essential for building and maintaining a healthy museum board? Or Gilberto or Tom? I liked what Gilberto said. You know, joining with the idea that who will replace you? You know, who is it that you can bring to this institution that you love? And so I wanna go back to it again about a museum being a, an entity that has its own life and needs to move forward. So 
if that is to happen, we, we will need uh, fresh blood from time to time. So I, I think that that is a, a good way to approach it. Um, I also think that, and this is where you come in, Simone, I think leadership, you know, the, the director of the museum, not being afraid to put tough questions um, before the board. Sometimes we don't have answers. So um, I, and, and I think what happens then is that if, if certain board members don't wanna address these questions, maybe they, move on along the way for other people to come in. So one thing I know, I, I'm not from Texas, of course, everyone knows that, but one conversation that we had a few years ago had to do with um, the open carry law and how that was changing, you know? And, and that was a very robust, someone else used this word, that was a very robust conversation because people had wildly differing views, which maybe had nothing to do with uh, diversity of a certain kind, but had to do with how they related to their rights as a US citizen. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's the important thing is the ability to have the tough conversations and to discuss what are we doing? What's the work? Are we doing it? So I think that's the way it works. All right, that's a, is a great answer. Um, one, one other aspect of it from the other side from as a director is you know, sometimes we have these conversations in a group meeting and some people are much more comfortable speaking up in a meeting and some people like to speak up one-on-one um, -on -one, and I, I try to make an effort to loop back around and it's people do have wildly different perspectives on, on some topics and sometimes there's kind of a um, shared very clear answer um, but I, I think um, listening back and forth is so important and really being able to kind of even ask, you know, tough questions or the foolish questions, like what, you know, how do you see how we should move forward on something like this? Gilberto, is there anything you'd like to add to that question? Well, you know, I think in, in many ways, uh, I've not attended any meetings, as I mentioned, so we've been on Zoom. I've been very impressed with the ability that, with your leadership to develop new creative strategies in this time of crises. I think that's really been very important for the board and, and for your staff and you're able to retain the staff that you've had it really made an extraordinary effort not to lose them and to get reposition them to do some new innovative and creative kind of thinking as well as programming. Uh, and I think that's added a lot to the board and, and, and could be a lesson for other board people too. Um, other, you don't see that happening a lot. Sometimes people just stick on to the same thing and don't change much. And, um, I've been very impressed to see high quality exhibitions at the museum, but also to see the planning that's going on for the redevelopment of the, the facility, as well as the strategic plan that you've all have developed. Uh, I think that's going to move the Blanton forward after we come out of this crisis in a stronger way. Yeah, thank you. You know, and one thing I'll just reflect on to what you just said, Gilberto, like when I, when, when COVID first, um, took effect and, and impacted us, um, you know, I, and I spoke to the board very soon after that. And I said, my commitment was to try and make sure that we could keep our staff together. I mean, unanimously, it was like, yes, that's what we need to do. And I, I think that kind of also sense of, um, again, shared values, like what do we need to do right now? And how do we get through this, right? And, and really great advice and guidance, um, different board members calling me at different times saying, you know, um, giving advice or counsel through this. And um, it's it's so important to have that because sometimes when you're dealing with really tough issues and you're sitting there trying to figure it out, um, having people to help you think through it and, and help you, you know, bounce ideas off and see am I hitting going in the right direction is, is what I'm feeling the right thing that we should do and it's it's hard to to do that in a vacuum and it's so important the the leadership board members play as we go through that um, I think I'm going to um, uh, kind of throw one last question out there and um, answer one last question which is what do you see kind of for the future of the Blanton, like on the horizon? Gilbert, you just talked about the, Gilberto, you talked about the master plan, but um, you know, this is a really particularly challenging time for us, but also a really rewarding time for being involved at a place like the Blanton. And Tom and Susanna, I'd love to hear from you and as well, Gilberto, just really quickly what you see on the horizon. What, what do you think is really important for us to do next? 
I think the master plan is fabulous. And, and I think, again, it would put the University of Texas and the Blanton on the map even more so as people will begin hearing about it. They want to come and see the Ellsworth or come and see Austin. But now they want to come and they will want to come and see what has happened and what a great what a great museum that this has become. And uh, and certainly I think it's going to help to have Austin even uh, not not just endorse it more, but to actually make it part of their agenda, both financially and uh, uh, helping it to grow and helping it to grow internationally uh, because museums today are, are encouraging people to, to come there. And I think uh, Austin would be crazy not to say, okay, this is a great place to live. It's a great place to come. And uh, we have this fabulous museum. museum. Thank you, Tom. Sorry to be kind of long-winded on that. No, but, no, that's I could. That's I, I was. I just wanted to emphasize, and it has a great museum there at the end. <laughs> Suzanne, any last last quick thoughts you want to share? Yeah, I. For me, one of the things that I was very happy to see this year, Simone, was how you looked at the ways in which our staff could contribute in different ways. Um, when COVID struck and we had to close. And I think that out of that also, we've also seen that guards uh, or cleaning support crew, they're paying attention to the museum too. And we've gotten to hear from them about the pride that they've felt seeing themselves represented in museum and works of art for the first time ever. And I think that again, going back to how I feel about museums and that the service that they have to perform or should be thinking about performing to the community needs to include those voices. And so I think that is the way that we will move forward. And I think we're already thinking about it with the master plan. So I'm very excited about that. Thanks, Suzanne. Well, um, thank you to all of you. I love working with you. And I have to give another special shout out to Janet Allen, our amazing um, National Leadership Board um, Chair. Um, it is my great honor to, to work with all of you and really grateful for your support and what you do to help make this museum um, what it is today and will be in the future. So um, with that, um, uh, I'm going to close us out. And um, that's it for tonight's conversation. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Um, but before we go, here are a few reminders. Next Tuesday at this same time, we have another curated conversation for you. This time it's about our new exhibition, um, Expanding Abstraction, Pushing the Boundaries of Painting in the Americas from 1958 to 1983 mostly from the Blanton's collection and uh, organized by the deputy director um, for uh, collections and exhibitions, Carter Foster. Um, be sure to register. This is a free event. Uh, for more details or to watch past curated conversations, go to blantonmuseum.org slash museum from home. Um, we always value your support. And one of the best ways that you can show it is by becoming a member. And you can become a member at blantonmuseum.org slash membership. Or if you want to you know, just be in the know and stay informed and know about what's coming up on our programs and other news, sign up for our newsletter at blantonmuseum.org slash subscribe. Thanks again. And we hope to see you all next week and in the, our gallery soon. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye.